Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is December 11th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery here. You can see our storm system moving down towards the California coastline, spreading moisture back up over the Pacific Northwest here. And we'll look what kind of impacts we can expect from that in the next couple of days. Here's that big ridge that's going to come across Pacific Northwest for this next week here and really dry us out for probably the entire week towards next weekend. You can see that subtropical tap of moisture move all the way up towards Alaska. Their big claw, it looks like here. This is ridge is really going to dominate us for the next several days. But through the extended, there is hope for some Arctic air moving down into BC here and potentially impacting the Pacific Northwest. We'll take a look at that here in the extended forecast as well. I'm also going to do a little bit of a UTC um, tutorial here and how we can convert UTC time to local time here across the Pacific Northwest. So stick with me towards the end of the video for that. Now taking a look here at Seattle, you can see below average temperatures so far this month. You almost got the average yesterday there. Not bad precipitation wise so far, but we're going to need it because we're going to turn dry here about the next week and no big precipitation events probably on in through mid-December shown. Kind of an interesting stat here, SeaTac has never recorded measurable snowfall on December 9th, the only day during the month of December with, uh, with no measurable snowfall. Kind of interesting there. Now taking a look here, National Weather Service Spokane, Monday through Thursday, high temperatures into the 20s low temperatures single digits and teens confidence is high so heads up and the cold is going to continue friday and beyond here too as you can see some low temperatures all the way into the negative fahrenheit values there so a nice graphic here by the national weather service Spokane. Here we're looking at Pendleton, Oregon. You can see some of these uh, totals out here are quite nice. Winter weather advisories in effect. East slopes the Cascades where that extreme drought and exceptional drought does exist. 48 inches of new snow would help bust that drought out there. Snow piles up and it's a more effective drought buster generally versus rainfall, which tends to run off a little bit more. Snow melts a little bit slower and can saturate the ground a little bit better there. So a nice graphic here from Pendleton, Oregon. This is for Sacramento, California here showing the Sierra Nevada. Still some more big snowfall totals coming on here. Potential for a little bit of snow for I-5 Northern California as well. But that should be winding down here across California eventually. But it's still going to go on in through tomorrow morning. See the snow levels here. Some strong winds still possible as well. And still some major impacts. So heads up if you are traveling across the Sierra Nevada here. Coming up on in through tomorrow morning. Now looking here, our low pressure system off the coastline there, you can see this moisture kind of hang out across Oregon, Idaho, and Montana as we go on through Monday morning here. And the system's going to push off to the east and still impact Montana by the time we're going through Tuesday. But you can see the precip end across Washington, Oregon by the time we're going into Monday night, Tuesday morning, and really dries us out here across Pacific Northwest. Here we're into Thursday morning. There's Friday morning shown here. There's Saturday morning shown here, a bit of an impulse coming down out of the north there, but pretty light precipitation amounts and really only for the Rockies might clip northeast Washington here. But you can see that we could start to bring a system here through Monday, but it would be not a big precipitation maker here. Some Arctic air would be associated with this as well. So we'll continue to watch that, but that's getting a little bit far out into fantasy land as we speak. Then maybe another impulse after that. But again, fantasy land stuff for now. Taking a look here, snow total Kuchera ratio. You can see Oregon getting some nice snowfall mass as we go in through tomorrow afternoon shown there. But Washington, and pretty much precipitation coming to an end this morning. And then you can see some snowfall piling up with a little bit of those northern impulse storms. They move across the region here through this week and on in towards early next week. But we have plenty of time to check out that and see what, how the model runs do with that system. Now, this is for Idaho and Montana, portions of Wyoming here. You can see that snowfall moving across the region here with the storm. Now we're into Tuesday morning. Look at the snowfall piling up across southeast Montana. Pretty dynamic amount of snowfall rolling through there. A strong storm. Might have to pay a little bit more attention to that. It's kind of an interesting looking system. But you can see the valley's getting a little bit of snowfall potentially across Idaho as we go on in through tomorrow night on through Tuesday morning. Then you can see that snow still piling up off through Wyoming. Some of Yellowstone getting some good amounts there as well. Now taking a look here back to Washington, Oregon, checking out some of the wind speeds coming up here. You can see the winds die off and they're still pulling out of the northwest across Oregon here as that system moves through. But you can see Monday, Tuesday, generally light gradients across much of the Pacific Northwest here. Then we start to kick some offshore winds as we go through Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So maybe that'll stir up the atmosphere enough and give us some nice sunny days at least out of this dry streak coming up here for this week on into later this week. No big major um, east wind events expected here a little bit of wind coming through the Fraser River Valley here shown Thursday morning stampede gap going and the, the gorge looks like the best wind so far but again we'll watch that and see if anything trends differently but no big wind storms are expected out of that 
And this is that low pressure system here. Just wanted to scroll through here and show you what's coming up. So you can see the big ridge kind of just over the area here, just high pressure, just dominating this cutoff low way out over the Pacific Ocean here. This is Wednesday morning. This high pressure building up here, and that's what's going to be giving us our offshore flow, but no intense gradients across the region here showing up right now. And we go on to extend it a little bit more, and you can see some troughing start to form here across portions of the Pacific Northwest as you go on into Saturday night and Sunday here. You see that troughing there maybe a weak impulse will move through the region here associated with an arctic high setting up over bc alberta and east of the rockies shown there again we have a lot of time to look at that system here and we have to see how the model runs trend with the strength of this arctic high over british columbia and see how it impacts us in the pacific northwest i like to play this map out here we're looking at the north pole there's russia there's alaska yukon bc washington oregon there's hawaii there's the pacific ocean here if we let this play you can see the nocturnal and diurnal heating and cooling cycle across the northern hemisphere i just kind of like to watch this go sometimes and you can see this really cold air over siberia here really doesn't get affected by those cycles as the sun's rays are so low that it doesn't get to warm them up during the daytime too much but look at africa during their daily highs here you can see them peak out here and then you can kind of see that uh, the nighttime cooling, the daytime heating just kind of transfer through. And this is why they call them mid-latitude cyclones. See this temperature gradient here kind of right along the mid-latitudes and generally usually affects us here in the Pacific Northwest, but that's kind of where a temperature gradient is found and that's why those systems form there. Now taking a look here, this is what's, uh, let's take a look at the two meter temperature anomaly here. So as we scroll through, you see the cold air is still settled over us as we go into Monday night and Tuesday. And that's what like the National Weather Service and Pendleton were talking about, the cooler than average temperatures here across the region. And then going on through this week, and you can see some of this Arctic air try to set up here across BC, Montana, Alberta here, and try to get into the Pacific Northwest. We'll take our sweet time watching this because this is probably going to change a little bit here. We don't know the strength of this Arctic air that's going to make its way into BC here. Some of this is making it out over the coastline here. So maybe a little bit of cyclogenesis back into the Pacific Northwest under this scenario. But again, it's just fantasy for now. We're just kind of watching it, setting the stage for us watching it day by day as we go through the week. Now taking a look at general trough and ridge position. Big trough here, north flow on the backside of this ridge here, helping develop the storm system over the Pacific Northwest currently. And you can see this ridging starts to really get going as we go through midweek here. That's going to bring the offshore winds across the area here. Then you can see this ridge backs up a little bit here, and these systems try to take a swipe at us in this north flow here as we go through later this weekend and towards next week. Again, fantasy land right now. We're just going to watch it and see how these develop. Now taking a look here, this is precipitation deficit over the next 10 days. Look at this. I mean, we got a rainforest to take care of out here across Washington. Look at some of these uh, deficits showing up here. This is 10 day uh, precipitation anomaly and just really shows that we usually get some pretty wet systems this time of year here and we're going to be getting nothing as we go through the next week at least. Now taking a look here, Seattle Tacoma for Monday, Tuesday, generally light winds showing up in the ensembles and we get this offshore flow and that's what these winds, a little bit of a wind increase here is showing, showing that those offshore winds. And then you can see maybe some systems returning way off into the extended here. Don't put any stock in that as of right now. We're just talking about potential inversion development here and some fog and then maybe clearing things out a little bit here as we go through mid and later this week. Now taking a look here, another interesting thing that ensembles of the European ensembles do here, you can see one through 50 and it kind of shows total cloud cover here and you can see as we get those offshore winds coming on here we tend to clear out a little bit more so maybe some nice sunny days will develop across much of the pacific northwest with some of these offshore winds hopefully those inversions don't set up too bad uh, Seattle Tacoma this is just precipitation shown this morning then we start to dry out dramatically towards next weekend just wanted to show you this ensemble run here this is uh, last night's run 06z so here we go Seattle Tacoma starting later next weekend we could start to bring some potential for some snowfall even to the lowlands depending on how that cold air sets up but it's just fantasy right now we have plenty of time to watch that develop here in the forecast now taking a look, six to 10 day temperature outlook here. You can see that remaining below average of the North flow across much of the West here, eight to 14 day, not much different. And there's that precipitation deficit 
clearly showing up here through December 20th and through all the way to Christmas Eve there, December 24th across Pacific Northwest shown. Now looking at this, I just wanted to show you guys a lot of that snow that you saw falling was falling right in this area here. So hopefully it can start to bust some of this exceptional drought. Maybe it's a sign of things to come across um, uh, the east slopes of the Cascades. Oregon continue to get these systems through there and maybe we can continue to try to erode some of this drought. It's been a long term, a hard time out here across the east slopes of the Cascades of Oregon. And you can see they took away all the high avalanche danger, but still considerable avalanche danger from Mount Hood, the Olympics, and all the Cascades here. So yeah, I've been telling everybody check out this Northwest Avalanche Center site for some time now. Now taking a look here, UTC time. So basically it's zero for London here, for example. And if you go to Vancouver or Seattle, Portland, you're at negative eight. So when it's midnight here in London, it's four in the afternoon here. So that's the zero Z run. Basically the European is running at zero Z. You want to subtract eight hours from that and that's 4 PM. But the trick to it is this is a 24 hour clock. So you have midnight, which is 24. You subtract eight from that, you get 16, which in military time is what? 4 p.m. So that's kind of, you have to do two calculations there. You have to subtract the eight hours and you have to subtract it from a 24 hour clock. So if you're, uh, if it's noon, you're subtracting eight from 12, which equals 4 a.m. here in the Pacific Northwest. So the 12 Z run runs at 4 a.m. here. The midnight run runs at 4 p.m. here, for example. So you can do those calculations in your head. Use that 24 hour clock and subtract eight from it. And you can, uh, you, you know, you can do that calculation from UTC universal time coordinated towards the actual Pacific daylight time here. I hope I didn't just confuse you more with that, but use the 24 hour clock and subtract eight hours from it when I talk about UTC times or when you hear anybody talking about it for that matter. So. Anyway, here, yeah, it looks like we're going to set up a nice ridge over the area for this week coming up here, but there is a potential for some more wintry weather coming up through our extended forecast as we talked about there. We'll just continue to watch that day by day. There's no guarantees. Of course, as you know, it's off in fantasy land at this point, but really we do not like we're getting any Pacific big moisture systems in here, and this is typically the time of year that we do it. So we're going to build up a huge precipitation deficit again through December here. Very interesting times. Um, but yeah, we still have to go through this for Oregon, the snowfall for Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. Big snowstorm possible for portions of southeast Montana coming up here too, and some nice mountain snows going through a Montana also. But anyway, yeah, we'll just continue to do this day by day. I'll be interested to see in what kind of, you know, progress the models make with this cold air over BC. It looks like it's trying to form some of that through the extended, you know, and that's always a big hype machine around here across Pacific Northwest. But again, no big Pacific storms moving across the region here. So anyway, thanks to all my new members, subscribers, you guys make this channel possible. We'll just continue to go day by day and watch these model runs come in and try to get some, some consistency going. And until then, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow and I hope you're having a good day.